today I want to talk to you, and I'm, I'm just, it's just a setup. This is just getting you prepared on how to increase the presence and the power of God in your life. How to increase the presence and power of God in your life. We've been dealing with things about maturity and growing up. You need to understand God has a better plan for you than what you've been living so far. And all of that is contingent upon his presence and his power. You have been limited to what the world has told you to do. And even churches have told you to camp out at just getting saved. Just be saved. And that's all. I'm here to tell you it's more than just being saved. It's more than just accepting Jesus as your Lord and Savior. The word of God has empowered you, has empowered you to do great things. The Bible says they who know their Lord, their God, shall do great exploits. It's time we begin to move forward, marching, doing great things for Almighty God. I believe that over the next few weeks, we are already busting loose, doing something we've never done before. It's time to keep moving on and pressing on. It's no time to talk about, let's go back to what we used to do. If God can do more than what we can think and what we can imagine, then we need to give God the opportunity to do it. You need to give God the opportunity in your life to do things he's never done before. If God is the great I am, that I am. He said, I am that I am. Yeah. That's all in the present tense. Yeah. It has nothing to do with what happened to you in the past. It's what he's doing with you right now. Yeah. It's now that God is operating in you. Today is a new day. He is the I am. Don't let what has held you back or the weights of your past be upon you to make you to believe that you cannot do what you have failed to do yesterday. Just because you failed yesterday, this is a new day. Maybe you didn't get the job yesterday, but this is a new day. Maybe the doctor said you're not going to make it yesterday, but this is a new day. My God is the God of our I am. That means now. And just because yesterday was yesterday, let it stay yesterday. Don't make it today. The reason many of us can't advance is because we're remembering how we failed yesterday and say, well, you know, you didn't make it before. You need to be like that little choo-choo train that said, I think I can, I think I can. But with Jesus, you don't say, I think. You say, I can, I can, I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. That's his presence with you. That's the power of God that he's given you. Now, let me show you. See, a lot of folks, just like I said, they're interested in camping out. Not you. Mm -mm. Angela, I'm glad to see you out there. I see you back out there. I, a lot of people camp out on, I'm saved. I'm fire baptized. I can speak in tongues. Oh, I know Jesus and all that stuff. Oh, it's more than just speaking in tongues. It's beyond that. It's the power of Jesus, the power of God that can work in you, that you allow to work in you. And that happens through his presence and through his power of his Holy Spirit. Every one of you has an opportunity to do that. God created you in his image for a reason. Why? So he could dwell in you. He created you in his image so he could be in you. He could be reflected your life and what you have done and what we have done we have reflected mostly us and not him we have reflected what the world has told us we are and not who he says we are we have always referred to ourselves according to what mama said my name is Jim cause mama told me that I'm an A student I'm a B student I'm a C student cause the teacher told me that I can't work this kind of job because they didn't hire me over here. That's what they told me. Why are we listening today? When we got an almighty God who has given us the power, who says, what so things, whatever you desire, ask you can receive them. Why am I letting somebody else tell me what I can't do? I got to learn to throw off the shackles of what the world has tried to put me under. 
That's why I had him saying, break every chain. Because it's time we start breaking the chains of our culture, of our society, of our nation, of our country, of our people, and of our family's house. Did you get what I just did? I just quoted you Genesis. Where's Dorothy? Genesis 12, 1. We need to let go of our country, our people, our father's house, and let God make something out of us that he wants to make out of us. Every one of you is unique. Every one of you. Look around right now. How many other folk you see that are identical to you? See, when anybody see somebody that's identical to you, raise your hand. Let me see that you see somebody that look like you, act like you, talk like you, walk like you. I don't see no hands. What's wrong? The world tries to tell you, you common. You just like everybody else. I'm here to tell you that ain't what God said. Look how God created every one of you. Look, look around. Every one of us is different. He created us unique. Why did he create us unique? He created us unique because he has something unique for us to do. I can't be Brother Horn. I, I, I am me. He created me to be me. Guess what? He created you to be you. But the world, in order to enslave you, has tried to put you in a box, in a category. They, they, they say, this is where you belong. And guess who is the owner, the leader of this world? It is Satan. He owns all the kingdoms of this world right now, for the time being. That's it. And what he's done is lied to you. That you are this and you are that. And sadly, so many people people have bought into Satan's lies to believe that I am what other folks say about me. Hear yes, me. Sir. Don't you let nobody define you. Listen to me real clearly. Nobody has a right to define you except the one that created you. Yes, sir. That's good. Don't let this man tell you, you know, you like this, you like this. Don't let this sister tell you that you like this and you like this. You are who God created you to be. And what I have to do is to cause you to realize who God created you to be. Let's look at John 1 and 12. Just go there for a moment and look at what he said. John chapter 1, verse 12. I'm going to ask you this question. How many of you have accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior? Have you received him as your Lord and Savior? Do you accept that? Now look at what God says he has done. As many as received him, have you received Jesus? Raise your hand so we make sure that everybody's saying this. Not by a voice vote, we take it by a hand vote. You received him to as many, he gave, now watch, he gave the right to become what? Become what? To become what? So God has given me the ability to be his child. If God is the creator of the universe, then he's royalty. He's majestic. He has power. He has it all. He has given me the right to be his child. If I'm his child, then I inherit the characteristics of my parent. Yes, sir. That's why he created me in his image and his likeness, because he wanted me to be like him. But when we screwed up in the garden, what happened was we took on what the world said rather than what the word said. God said, I'm his child. The world says, I'm something else. And all of us have allowed the world to define us. We don't need to let the world define us. We are defined by how many A's and B's we make. Our grade point average. We are defined by our profession, our careers. We are defined by 
All kinds of things. We are defined by our past, what I used to do. But God says we're his child. The worst thing that you could ever lose is your identity, that you are a child of God. If you are a child of God, that's the most precious thing you have. Because if you lose the identity of who you are, you don't know where you're about to go. You have no vision. And without a vision, people perish. The devil robs you of your vision of being a child of God because he doesn't want you to grasp who you really are and the power that you have within you to excel and not fail. Satan doesn't want you to know that. So Satan has arrayed the whole world system to put you in a box. To put you in a box. You are a child of God. Well, some of you can't swallow that. You can't believe it. Because you've been beat down for so long. I spoke to the first service and I told them this morning. Moses brought all them folk out of Egypt. He brought Egypt and Pharaoh to their knees. And he brought them out. Here come all these people. Free! Free at last! Thank God I'm free at last! And just a few days out. I ain't got no water out here. Where my food coming from? I don't know if I want this freedom. Because if I got freedom, I got to look out for me. We need to go back to Egypt. At least when we were in Egypt, we might have been slaves, but we had something to eat. Who's going to provide for us out here? And so, though Moses got them out of Egypt, he didn't free their minds. And Satan has been playing that trick on people for generations to keep you enslaved in your mind. And how did he do it when they got to the promised land? What did he do? He let ten folk come back with a report and yell that report. We can't beat them people. They're giants in that land. We can't defeat them. They came back with the report and they made other folks start believing what the majority was saying. Hence the trick of the devil is always to get the majority to tell you who you are. And you start believing the majority instead of believing the word of God, That's it, God. that you're a child of God. I'm here to cause you to realize you have power, you have anointing by right of the fact that you are God's child. You need to get that through your head. Think for a moment. The Bible said as many as who received him, he gave the right to become children of God. Now ask yourself, have you received Jesus as your Lord and Savior? Have you? Then if you have, then according to this scripture, you are what? The story is told about a young man whose father was rich. He was of noble birth, and his father had provided everything for him. And he kind of felt like he wanted to be free. So he told his dad, he said, Dad, I want you to give me all that you're going to give yep. me when you die, because I want to be free. I've seen what's going on in the world. I want to go out there and be like the world. So his daddy let him go. Now, it wouldn't have been like some of us. You ain't going nowhere, son. You in my house. You're going to do what I did. You do. <laughs> but see, God's not that way. God don't make you do nothing. Amen. You want to go out there in the world? He's going to let you go. I've been in the world. Some of y'all been in the world. Yes, you had fun in the world. <laughs> <laughs> you know everybody has done something that's your past but God told us and we know the word behold I'm doing a new thing that's what God's doing he's doing a new thing I don't care what you did I don't ever care what your past was all I'm concerned about is what we're going to do from this point on and so what Satan tries to do is keep you locked up in the world so the boy packed his bags and he went on his journey had his daddy's money. Daddy wasn't dead because it was still his daddy's money. When the, it was the money only to him when his daddy died, but he went. Went over there, and you know how a young man gonna do. 
had all the money, and you know how young women gonna do. You start showing all that green. And women come, hey, what's your name? You so fine, you so cute, look at you, woo, man, you so now. They, they ain't concerned about your looks, they're concerned about that green in your pocket. Okay, nothing else about you. You got money, you got women. So that man had a ton of women. Had all kinds of fun. But one thing about women, brothers, let me tell you so you know. One thing about a lot of women and a single man, you got a lot of money, and once you're going to find out, you're going to have no money and no women. Because when your money gone, child, I had to let him go. He couldn't do nothing to me. I'm just letting the brothers know. See, sisters, see, I, I didn't expose them, see. You, but you already know it. You've been flashing your water bills from time to time. You're fat that. That's what it is. Don't, don't talk about size. Don't matter. When they see all them dollars, it matters. <laughs> it matters to the sisters. How much dollars you got? How big is your bank account? That's what they're looking at. Don't let them fool you. <laughs> but anyway, he spent all his money on all the wild women, got drunk, got high. The, did what the world said he was supposed to do. And the Bible says that what happened is he was out there scuffling after he lost all this money. All his friends were gone. He was hired out to a pig farmer and to a Jew. Uh-uh, you know, slopping pigs is a terrible thing. And he used to look at the pig slop and think, hey, man, I'd like to have some of that pig slop. Yeah. But the Bible said when he came to his senses, that meant when he was in the world, he wasn't in his senses. Because he was a child of royalty. He was a special man. But he went to the world because the world was yelling at him. The world showed him all the glitz and glamour. But the Bible said when he came to his senses. Now let me get you to understand what God is saying to a whole lot of y'all. Running after the world, you out your mind. You ain't in your right mind. When you're trying to do what the world has defined you as, when he has called you his child. Say, when he came to his senses, he said, wait a minute, in my father's house, even the servants get better than what I'm getting right now. And here I am, a child of the king. Some of you all need to wake up and recognize you are a child of the king. You settle for jobs that pay you pennies. You settle for things that you can do a whole lot better if you realize who you really are. The power of God is available. The anointing is available. I'm going to reveal that, how you're going to get it and how you can operate in it, but not if your mind is enslaved. Right. Satan knows how to enslave your mind. I said it to the first service. I'm going to say it to you. When I truly came to know who I was, I was in that church over there in, back, in, in, in Dallas, my first integrated environment. And I'm going to be, I told, I told some of the guests that are here, they ain't in here, they ain't in here, so they ain't going to get offended that much right now. But since it's, except, and, and Cliff and, and Melody, they don't count. You know, <laughs> you know they family, so you know. But, but when I was over there in Dallas, and I got over in my first integrated environment, I was around all them white folk and everything. And uh, so don't nobody take them races. I'm, I'm, I'm on Facebook, too. I'm not, I forgot about them. There's some of them out there. But I'm going to tell the truth anyway. So what happened? I'm in school, a whole bunch of white folk around, and, and they come up, you know Jesus is your Lord and Savior? What you talking about? I've been in church all my life. But do you know him personally? And they led me to Jesus, told me who Jesus was, and, and I was a child of God. Oh, Jesus, when I found out I was a child of God, I began relating to being a child of God and not what my mama and daddy had brought me up to be. And so, and that's when mama told me at the time, she said, because she didn't want me to go in ministry, and she said, you don't need to go, and I told her, mama, ain't got nothing to do with you, because that's when I realized who child I really was. I wasn't a child of my mom and dad. I had been born again as a child of God. And then them precious little white children, Come telling me when the little white girls say, I want to date you. Now, see, Melody and Cliff don't count because she got, she got black folk in her family. Y'all need to know that. You don't mind them knowing that. Or did I tell somebody you didn't want them to know? 
So, so that's why she went us. And then, you know, your family, your family anyway. Y'all been adopted. You remember what folks say about him when they see him on TV? They see him in the audience. They call him the albino. <laughs> but anyway, what happened when they told me? She said she wanted to date me, and I asked what happened. She said uh, uh, my mom and daddy told me I couldn't. She said I couldn't, and I said why? Cause you black. I said, what you mean by that? I thought we Christians, but you black. And white folk and black folk ain't supposed to get together. Because if they get together, they make polka dot babies. I said, what? I thought we Christians. I thought we, we come to know Jesus. We've been to revivals. We've been to all these things together. And this is what you tell me? And she said, yeah, because they wanted help. So I went and got my little white friends, all my little buddies. We got together. You know the story. You know the story. We sat around there. And see, what I'm telling you is how I got free so you can know how you can get free. So I got them all around me. And they said, yeah, Jim, it ain't good. And one of the guys I respected that could quote the Bible back and forward, he also confirmed the polka dot babies. Do you believe that I started believing that we would have spotty babies? if white folk and black folk got together. I had forgotten that in my own family, my cousin was half white and she wasn't spotty. There you go. And I love my cousin. I mean, you know, her hair was different than mine and she was a whole lot lighter, but I love my cousin, but she didn't have no spots all over her. She wasn't polka dot. But they told me and they confirmed it. And they said the black folk, white folk, can't get together because black people got a different culture and all this kind of stuff. Black people got their own churches they need to go to. White folk need to go to their own churches. And I told them, I said, well, if this is what Christianity, keep this crap. I don't want it. And I gave up Christianity. And I started studying all kinds of stuff. And I started studying demonology. And when I studied demonology, let me tell you what I learned. It's that if you tell a lie long enough, everybody started believing it. And I learned that when I studied Adolf Hitler and I saw that, that what he did, you say the lie over and over and over again, people believe it. And let me tell you a lie that you've been told over and over and over again, that you are judged by the color of your skin. And you have believed it. You have believed that what somebody say about you on the outside is enough to keep you from doing something. And you know what? They are right. As long as you keep believing what folks say about you, they have a right to define your destiny. But I'm here to tell you today, what does God say about you? You need to come to your senses and realize that you are a child of God. Now, this is what you get mad with me about. But if I'm going to set you free, I've got to cause you to realize that you are more than what the world has defined you as. You are children of God. Power God ain't coming to nobody that, that don't realize who they are. How can you walk in something if you don't know that you got the authority to get it? You're going to blame me. Well, that's for the pastors. That's for, that's for the, the, the apostles. That's for the prophets. It's for every child of God. Amen. Not just for me. It's for you. There's an anointing that God has for every one of you. But you can't let the world keep defining you. You are a child of God. Now, if you can believe that, why don't you just whimper to somebody and say, I'm a child of God. That's what Bishop said. If that's what the scriptures say, you ought to be able to say what God said. Whose word are you going to believe? Elder, they get mad with me, you think yes? Am I not getting yet, not, yet. not yet, okay. <laughs> but you know what? If I can get you to realize you're a child of God, you are entitled to certain things, not from the world, but from the king, the king, then you don't settle for my pillow. You take the royal pillow. Amen. You don't settle for no scooter. You get the Rolls Royce. You got to understand as long as the world can define you, they can let you live on the other side of the railroad tracks. When you need to be living up on the mountain. You don't talk about a shack. You talk about a mansion. If you're a child of the king, you got to realize you can do more than you ever thought you could because the father has given you the keys to the kingdom. 
you lose your job. I've seen folk in this church lose their job and never miss a meal. Because they come to realize that their destiny is not determined by their job, but by their God. I've seen people when the doctors have said that you're sick and we don't know if we're going to be able to get you delivered and get you healed. I've seen them healed and delivered because they come to realize their help doesn't come from no doctor. It comes from God. When you realize whose child you really are, you stop letting the world define you by your GPA. You stop letting them define you by who they say you are. And if I can get you to realize you're a child of God, in these two next points, I can get you to realize you're entitled, not from the world, but entitled from God as an heir of Almighty God to have an habitation of God in you. And when He's in you, His presence will bring power of His anointing. When you realize, you are not limited by what the world says, not by what your wife say, your husband say. I don't care what they say about you. I always talk about what's God say about me. You know what? If you've been a liar, the world's going to always remind you, you're a liar. If you've been anything, what if you were a thief, the world's going to always remind you, you're a thief. You hear me? But watch this. I'm going to give you one more scripture, and that's it, I think. I think. Philippians 2 and 13. I'm going to break this one down, and then I'm going to quit, okay? I'm going to quit after this. Somebody say, help him, Jesus. Help him, Jesus. Philippians 2, 13 says, for it is God who works. Notice, God who does what? We spend our time studying about what God did, and we're not paying attention to what he is doing. Behold, I am doing a new thing. And here's what I say to everyone in this room right now. God's doing a new thing in you. You got to recognize this as far as saying, God's doing a new thing in me. Come on, embrace this. God's doing a new thing in me. In me, in me, in me. Come on. See? What do we study? We study what God did. When you go to uh, ge geometry, you study the, the mathematics that he put the universe together and all this stuff, physics. You study uh, um, geography. That's what he did. You study history. That's what he has done. But God is doing something right now. Notice the scripture. It is God who works. That's present tense. He's doing something now. But we have spent our time, and the world has educated us, to look at only what God has done, not what God is doing. Yeah. Hear me? Hear me? When you go to school, what do you learn? You learn history. When you go to school, you learn what has been done. You learn what, is, what, what, what has happened. And then you apply that to what you see happening. But God is still working today. He is working, as he said right here, who works how? In you. The greatest thing you need to discover is not what's on the outside, but what's happening in you. Because God is working where? In you. God who works where? You. So you're praying for God to do something outside. But if you grasp what I'm about to tell you, you get God to work in you. You ain't praying for him to do something for you. What you're going to start doing, because he's working is you, in you, is start commanding with the power of God in you that the mountain move. And because he's working in you, it is your authority that moves the mountain. Why did Jesus say, woman, your faith has made you. Why did he talk about your faith? Because it's the power that works in you. But if the devil can get you to believe you're not a child of God, he's not working in you, you'll never get nothing from God. Because he's working in you now, and the world doesn't want you to see that. It is he who works in you. Notice the next word, both. Well, what does both mean? That means it's more than just one thing. So God's working in you to do two things. One, works in you to will. That means he works on you to get your mind to understand, get your mind right to understand who you really are 
so he can take you to be able to do what he wants you to do. If your mind ain't right, if you enslaved and keep trying to go back to Egypt, go back to what the folk telling you to do, what the majority are saying about you, you'll never realize who you are and your mind will never be straight so you can do the powerful things, the great exploits that God said you can do through him. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. But if I don't understand, I have the power of God available to me through the right that I'm a child of God. If I don't know that, I can't do nothing. What did Jesus say? To those Jews who believed on him, he said, now, here, hear me. This is John 8, chapter. He said, if you will abide in my word, and my word abides in you. He said, then you'll know the truth. And the truth will do what? Truth going to make you free. See, let's get this clear. Let's, let's stop this. We ain't going to say set you free, nothing, no more. Take a prisoner and you set him free. He's a prisoner. He's been set free. So when the law comes, the law can put him back in jail because he's been set free. God don't set you free. He makes you free. And when somebody's been made free, you can't put them back in slavery. See, that's another thing you've been hearing folks say. Yeah, you know the truth. The truth going to set you free. But a prisoner that's been set free and ain't been made free is still entitled to be put back in prison because he was set free and not made free. God made you free. So let's get that straight, okay? Stop saying set free. I've been made free. And if I've been made free, I've got to be made free in my mind. And I've got to be made free also in the natural which God already did because the natural follows the spiritual. So he said, both to will. Now, why is he working on your mind so you can get you to think the right way? Because you've been conforming to the pattern of this world too doggone long. You've been running around the same old mountain, <laughs> round and round, what the world trying to tell you. Whatever TV say, I can remember in my younger days, <laughs> I'm doing good, thank you. You know, in my younger days, when I was in high school, they used to have these big old medallions. Maybe some of y'all can't remember, but back in my day, I get, I'm going to get you your day too. I used to have a big medallion. Had the gold chain around my neck. Had a big old medallion. Had some kind of stone in the middle. It was purple. And I used to go around with my medallion. Does anybody else remember my dad? Y'all don't remember that? See, some of the folks do. Let me bring you up with some of the others. Then they, they, and another thing, when they, you remember the one came out with, dynamite! Everybody started wearing them little pants with the, my wife used to get mad with me because she used to talk about, my pants used to be up like this. They call that being in the flood. But it was whatever the world was saying, we were running after the world. We'd buy anything they tell you. Yeah. I remember Kung Fu, Cologne. <laughs> I used to have some cologne. I had to have that Kung Fu cologne. Y'all don't remember that. Y'all remember? You remember the red dagger, don't you? <laughs> had to have all this kind of stuff that the world said you had. We're making all these decisions because the world said it. We go out and spend all our money because the world said it. And when the Jordans came out, the Air Jordans. Okay, I'm trying to come a little more closer to your age. And then you're going around folk killing folk for the Air Jordans. So I can fly. <laughs> the world has manipulated and controlled you and kept you bound up in its way of thinking. Therefore, right. he says in Romans 12, 2, don't conform any longer to the pattern. If you're ever going to be free, my brothers and sisters, you've got to have a different way of thinking. So God works in you to will to get your mind straight. And it's working in you to will is when he takes up his presence. He becomes present with you. He's present with you to understand, man. He's working in you presently, right now. First of all, he's got to get control of this thing. And then the next thing he says, to do. One is to will, to work in your mind. The second thing is to work in your body. Let me tell you what's been happening to me the past few weeks. Everything's been going on. I've been studying. I've been having a great time. Y'all have made me have to read. 
I'm trying to keep up with the Psalms and trying to keep up with the New Testament reading and everything. And I ain't still caught up with y'all yet. So I'm sitting at my computer all day trying to get stuff done, get these videos done for y'all. And I've been noticing, I've been sitting and sitting, weeks on end, sitting and sitting, came here to the church, ran upstairs to go to my office, and got upstairs. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I was all winded. Told my wife, we're going to start walking. She's been trying to walk for a long time, but I got to start walking because all I've been doing is sitting and reading. Here's what I'm fixing to tell you. Many of you come to the church, you've been getting all this word. You've been sitting and hearing. God can't work in you because you ain't been doing no work to keep your body up for him to work in you. Meaning this, unless you start serving, you're going to miss out on the anointing because God don't need to give you no power for you to just sit. Do you hear what I'm saying? He said in Acts 1 and 8, give me that scripture just for a moment. He said, but you shall receive what? Receive what? Now what I talk about this message is about his presence and power, right? You shall receive what? Power. What's the power for? The power is for you to be a witness. If you ain't a witness, you don't need no power. If you just gonna sit, you don't need no energy. Long as I'm sitting there getting in the presence of the Lord, basking in the presence of the Lord, he doesn't give me no energy to do nothing with it. So back to the scripture, he works in us to will and to do his good pleasure. Two things that are going to set you free, my brothers and sisters. Two things is when you come to a revelation of this. Charles, you know where I'm fixing to go. And I'm just going to have to end this service right here on this point. God's presence, I'm going to give you this thing, I'm going to talk about it next week is increased in your life by an encounter with the Holy Spirit in hearing the word of God. Listen to what I'm saying, okay? You want the power? You have the presence of God? You want God's presence? It comes from hearing the word. Hearing the word and having an encounter with the Holy Spirit. You see, you got to hear it. God, you're like, y'all are hearing the word. But just hearing this word without an encounter with the Holy Spirit, this word ain't worth nothing. My preaching without the Holy Spirit is nothing but dry, lame talk. What you have to have when you're reading and studying the word is an encounter with the Holy Spirit. And when you encounter the Holy Spirit, you begin to sense the presence of Almighty God. Are y'all hearing me? Okay, I'm going to hurry up because y'all looking out there like. <laughs> the second thing, God's power, his anointing is increased in your life by an encounter with the Holy Spirit in doing the word of God for his glory. In other words, to hear the word is no good without the Holy Spirit. To talk about trying to do something without the Holy Spirit is no good. But the Holy Spirit is not going to come unless you're willing to do something. Hear me. Holy Spirit is not going to give you power for you to sit down on the pew every Sunday and then go home and do nothing for the glory of God and show up until next Sunday. You don't need no anointing. You don't need no power. Because when you get out there, all you're going to do is listen to what the world told you to do. You have forgotten that you are a child of God, that God has anointed you to do great works. Okay. I'm thinking this go, but I want you to hear one more thing. I'm sorry. You know, he didn't let me preach last week, so I'm trying to get it all in right now. I want you to hear one word, and I just need it. I need it right here. This one, come on. I can't find the scripture. Okay, that's what I'm going to find it because I need you to hear it. They who know their Lord. Come on, find it for me. Daniel chapter 11, verse 32. Look at this, Daniel eleven thirty-two. 32. 
Those who do wickedly against the covenant, that is the word of God, he shall corrupt with flattery. In other words, make you think you're something. You ain't nothing. Leading you on to hell anyway. But the people who know their God, read that scripture, shall be what? The people who what? Shall be and do what? Guiding light. This, I proclaim you as I end this. You know God. You have been hearing about God. You have not been hearing motivational messages. You've been hearing about God. The people who know their God, this is your right, an heir. It is your right to cause every voice that rises up in condemnation to you to be condemned itself as a child of God. You are a child of God, and as a child of God, you have a right to the presence of God in you. You have a right to the power of God operating in you. That is your birthright. You have a right to be able to speak to the mountain, and the mountain move. You have a right to decree a thing, and it shall be established. You have a right as a child of God to do the very same things that God does in the earth because he gave you dominion over it. But you'll never ever recognize that as long as you keep letting the world define you and keep you within its confines. Does that make sense? So the last word. You want to ask me about anything? Because I'm fixing to let you go. Oh, of course, we got to get the offering first. <laughs> you want to ask me about anything? Because I need you to get this. One, I tried to tell you you're a child of God. Two, you're entitled to the presence of God. Three, you're entitled to the power of God. But that will never happen until you realize, step one, you are a child of God. And you have a right to God being with you. You have a right to the power of God operating in you. 